What's up, everybody? Welcome, welcome. I am your host, Sunny D. And I'm Captain J. And, and we're, we're the, the Pot Smoking Moms. Moms. Welcome to the show. So glad you made it. If you are a fan of the show, please do us a solid by uh, rating, subscribing, sharing, and being friends with us on all social medias. Potsmokingmoms.com is our website. You could find all of the links there. Everything is there, including our Patreon and our, our events are also posted there. So check it out. We got something to smoke on. We hope you have some things to smoke on at home, too. We got a little segment sponsored by Fluent. Here we go. So grab your goodies. All right. So for me, I have a little bowl packed here of some tunnel vision from Freedom Town Holdings at Fluent. It says here, focus on relaxation with Freedom Town, Freedom Town Holdings Tunnel Vision, an indica leaning hybrid cross from Gelato 41, Gelato 41, and Runts. Bred for its sweet berry fuel flavors, funky burnt rubber and diesel aroma. To me, I think it smells like Parmesan cheese. It smells like Parmesan cheese. It smells like Parmesan cheese. Like Parmesan <laughs> cheese. Um, FTH Tunnel Vision produces profound tranquility with each dose, benefits in relieving the symptoms of insomnia, stress, appetite loss, and chronic pain. Ooh. With that tunnel vision. <laughs> I have a favorite of mine, a Durban Poison, previously known as Atlas. This land race sativa presents a palette of flavors ranging from sweet lemon candy to zesty anise making it a favorite of many dispensary patients and connoisseurs alike. This is a perfect daytime strain with clear and functional effects that stimulate creativity, sociability, and overall mood. It's very energetic and known as one of the purest feeling sativa varieties available on the market. Many users generally find Durban poison beneficial for energy, appetite suppression, migraines, mm. and anti-nausea relief. Appetite suppression, that's a good one. Yeah, I'm going to need plenty of that. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Mm. It doesn't taste like Parmesan cheese. It's good. So we don't have a guest interview this week. It's just us, but it's our hundredth episode. What? Dun, dun, dun. We are approaching our three year anniversary, uh, which I can't believe it's been three years already. Three. I feel years. like I feel like the first two years went by pretty fast, even though like it was like pandemic wise. And then the last year has been like normal going normal. normal. I don't know. This yeah. year has been flying by to me. Yeah. I can't believe we're coming up on our three year. Three years since the first episode that we aired. We have a, a post, one of our first posts on Instagram. Yeah. So look, I pulled up our very first. post. It's not our first post on Instagram. It's our first episode. First post. episode post. Because we did start on Instagram like in September. So our Instagram anniversary is like right around right now. OK. Like, But our podcast anniversary is October 16th. It was when our first episode aired three years ago. And um, if you're a patron, you can see now we're showing on the screen <laughs> the first episode thing we posted. It, it, it's not even like there's the no of the episode. Yeah, there's like uh, we're not on it. Obviously, we weren't showing our faces at the time. Yeah, We had we started the podcast and we were like, we're not going to show our faces. Yeah. You know, and then so it just says it here, like, annoyed by his neighbor's loud weed. <laughs> find out what he did on our first episode. Link in bio. And yeah. it's just like smoke, <laughs> you know. And look, we were starting. We look, were start just starting. Pothead liked by we have liked by Pothead Mom and like seven other people. <laughs> it's hilarious. Seven others. No comments. <laughs> no comments. We've come so far. We have. And that's all thanks to you guys that listen to us every week. Yeah. And especially our patrons. Our patrons. You guys really give us a motivation, and uh, we really appreciate you guys. I don't think we would have made it this far yeah. if it wasn't for our patrons and our listeners even if you're not a patron the one that interact with us with us on a daily 
on Instagram and they give us feedback. We, we know you're listening because you, you comment about something that we said or a story we talked about that really pushes us to keep keep going. Yes, we love that. We appreciate that. Hey, we want to welcome a new patron as well. Shirley, welcome to the club. Welcome, Shirley. Thank uh, you for joining. Yes. And hey, uh, if you're a listener and uh, you want to become a patron, please, by all means, go ahead on. Even if you don't want to contribute too much, we have a dollar contribution on one there. dollar. Just one, one dollar buck. a month. And uh, you get to see the show mm -hmm. and no ads. You get a little, little discount on our events. Yeah. Become a part of our Discord server. There's a lot of little perks in there that you can get. Absolutely. And if a dollar, you know, a dollar is too much, it's okay, too. You can't contribute that way. That's all right. By rating, reviewing, or sharing our podcast, that's also helps us so much. We appreciate all of you for doing that. For those of you who have done that. And if you do it now, hit us up, man. We, we've got plenty of stickers. We'd love to send you a couple stickers. Yes, please. We do need some recent reviews. So if anybody hasn't reviewed us out yet and you like us, go give us a review. They, mu they must like us if they're listening, know, right? right? So we have an event coming up. The Orlando Bud Crawl, November 12th, 2022, this year. Tickets are on sale. We're meeting up at Chiba Hut at 11 a.m. And our first stop is True Leave and Binsk. Binsk will be there, who's also sponsoring the karaoke. Uh, yeah, I've been working on the karaoke, and that's going to be lit. It's going to be fun. Uh, second stop, we have Move. I love their bud there, Move. Flower's great. Third stop, Liberty Health Sciences. Oh, my God. And it's such a cute location. Everybody there is so nice. Can't wait to see them at Liberty Health Sciences again. And then we get back to Chiba Hut and we eat some of the most delicious ass food you've ever had in your life. Mm -hmm. And that's all part of your ticket. Yeah. A ticket includes the entertainment, snacks, your swag bag, exclusive discounts at each stop, uh, your tour shirt and your meal at Chiba Hut. So all that comes in the ticket price. Yeah. And you know what? To top that off, the cherry right here, these two, we're going to be there the whole time. <laughs> Uh, hyping you up and have to hang out with us at an intimate event. Like when we meet up with people at like these bigger events, it's only usually a quick two minute, three minute interaction because you're, you know, there's a lot of vendors, you're right. walking around, there's a yeah. lot of people. This will be 30 people hanging out, yeah. interacting, singing songs, getting oh my to God. know each other, yeah. visiting dispensaries. It's going to be a good time. It's going to be such a good time. And you know what? Like cutting together karaoke just. It, it's it's like it's the it keeps <laughs> me going throughout, throughout the week it keeps me going and especially when a new ticket is purchased i run straight to go see what their karaoke song they picked or yeah. what their or what their snack or is. what their snack is <laughs> it's so cool so anyways i hope you guys could check out the bud crawl and hey and if you're in miami we're planning on bringing the bud crawl here. Yes. So stay tuned. We want to take it all over the state. And yes, you do have to be a patient, um, obviously, because the dispensaries can only sell to patients. If you are not a patient and you need to get a referral to a doctor, let us know and we can see if our, you know, the clinics that we know work in your area. Yeah, absolutely. Hit us up. So um, this week... For me personally, we're still doing the school thing. I'm getting used to all that. We had our first open house. Mm, how was that? You got uh, to meet the teacher, got to know them a little more? Um, A little bit. It was kind of really reinforcing the stuff that we knew and kind mm -hmm. of like other things to get involved. I signed up to be part of the PTA. Oh, and not that I'm going to be like really there all the time. Be careful. You don't like participate in a bake sale and take their own brownies. I know, <laughs> right? That would be, that would so be so nuts. <laughs> and then, right. And then that I'm like, <laughs> and then in the car line, I'm thinking like, should I put, I have, you know, I, I haven't, I haven't put any of our stickers on my car. I just, not I mean, that I'm it like, is a, like red flag with for cops. Right, right, because yeah, exactly. I so get that. Like I don't really. It, car. it sucks. It's like that. But, but it... sometimes I'm like, man, I wonder if I put. I wonder if one of the other parents will see it, or like, I don't know if people if I should be like coming in. I've I've thought about I've like thought about wearing my dispensary shirt to walk, and I'm just like, why not? Why not? Why not? 
oh, what if I work at a dispensary and I have like, you know what I mean? They should yeah. everything like, and on top of that, Robert's like, my husband's like, I don't know, man. I don't know. And I go, well, what? if somebody notices that it is a dispensary shirt, they're that only noticing they, because they're part of the community. Exactly. You wouldn't know otherwise. Exactly. What it's that our bad is. signal. Like yeah. we will be like giving each other. So Unless maybe. it says cannabis or 420, that's obvious. Right. Um, they're not going to know what it is unless or yeah. our logo. This is cannabis. Leaf, right. You know, like, look, I'm wearing the fluent one. Yeah. It's like, just an people, FL. Yeah. No, I don't know that people would get that. And I was wearing that do, shirt at the grocery store the other day and I ran into a neighbor that I grew up with that lived across the street from my dad. I'm like, oh, hi. And we're like, hi. She's like, I follow you. And I was like, I know I've seen you like our stuff. Oh, so, so I know she must be cool. Yeah, she follows the podcast. She follows our IG. I don't know if she listens to the show. Oh, but who her, is it? Do I know them? I don't think so. I don't. I mean, they've liked our stuff, but I don't think um, I've ever seen her like comment or anything. I'll show you who she is. After okay, the show. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I probably know her. And I was like, oh, how funny. And and her kids go to my son's school because I've seen her leaving her house because her, her house is literally right by my son's school. Ah, and I'm yes. like, oh, so. Hmm. Well, we were neighbors know. again, you know, we we're neighbors growing up because she lived across the street from my dad's house and we're neighbors again now as adults and we didn't even realize. Ah, uh, hello. And she's like, she follows us and like, she follows us. What's she up? Speak. And yeah, then she, she mentioned out her. Yeah, she mentioned that she was like, oh, you know, I want to check out some of those events. You guys are always. Oh, going to. <laughs> all right. All right. We got to talk. We got to we got to tap her on the shoulder on the online. But yeah, so we so I'm always tempted to like wear the shirt. But I but I was about to and I didn't. I, I ended up going with the shirt that says raising the future, you know, because <laughs> you are. We, are, we, we, are, are, we, we are. are. But um, it was cool. It was Children interesting. All our future. <laughs> yes. They are our future, whether you they check you into the nursery home or not. <laughs> they're, they're the future. So but whatever it's, you know, we're doing the sounding out the reading and stuff. And How's it going? It's pretty good. She see, you know. Well, we had a hiccup the other day. They were like, X. Well, how did you, what's the sound for X? <laughs> you know? It's it's like, like Z almost. X like, xi- no, X like xylophone xi- or X yeah. like X-ray. Yeah. It could be hard X a- or, yeah. or it could be a Xi. Oh my God. A tricky, tricky, yeah. tricky. And we're doing times tables and stuff like oh, that. Oh, I can and- <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen to me reading. when that. He's, he's scored really high on all the standardized stuff for reading. I have a feeling the reading. same thing. They're going to like reading. They have a big imagination. I love yeah. it. I loved it too. But math, girl, when that he happens. He likes math. Good. I, good. Yeah. He good for him. But you, but you're it. good at math too. You're yeah, good at math. I'm okay at math. I'm pretty good. I get, I, as long as I have a calculator. No, I fear I for my life. Well. You know I do. <laughs> do you even, you throw a number into the conversation. My brain starts going, ah. Like, no, no, it doesn't get what happens unless the numbers like throwing a wrench. <laughs> right. Exactly. My daughter was playing like superhero. I got the power. Bobby, you got the power of fire. Mommy, you got the power. What power you want? You want leaf power? Leaf. And I go, girl, yeah, I always want leaf power. You give me the leaf power all the time, girl. So, Leaf power. What about you? What's oh up? no, not much going on. I just returned from a work trip and I swear, like <laughs> whenever I travel, it's always a mission because you know, I need I need my medicine, uh-huh. you know. And I just, you know, I have my routine when I'm gonna travel. I always like think about how many days I'm gonna be gone. I roll the number of J's I think I'll need for mm-hmm, those days. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, pack it and all that. And did we talk about the last time when you traveled and how you got the how you found how you got a hookup? I'm pretty sure we talked about oh my the, God. the Popeyes lady and how I bought weed from her. Because I'm like, girl, that is like so <laughs> gutsy. I don't know if I would be able yeah, to I do that. And I was going to be in D.C. and like but I was like it, where the conference was is in Arlington. So like. I didn't want to have to really travel to D.C. where the cannabis was. I mean, was. it's a jump hop and a skip. But we just I know, take the but subway boom back. Exactly. But yeah. I didn't wasn't going to really have time with yeah. all the stuff I had mm-hmm. to do for work. So I just take the number of J's I need and I put I put it right in the dupe tube and I put it right in with my makeup. The dupe tube's black, so it looks like an eyeliner like it. Uh-huh. I just put it in there. Yeah, no problem. Right. I, except for I packed my um, mousse. Right. Which was probably I knew it was too big, but I was like, oh, it's not even full. Let me just pack it. 
So they flagged my bag to be checked because of the moose that was in there. So I was like, oh, I hope they don't smell anything. I was more worried them about it smelling than like them finding it. But since he had to have a mask on, the guy had a mask on. I was like, okay, well, maybe he won't smell it because it's like in a dupe tube and a makeup bag and like, you know. Right. Uh, so no, he just told me that the moose was too big and he let me keep it, but he told me it shouldn't be blah, blah, and I got to go. So I was fine. But then it's the mission of finding a spot to smoke in a city that you don't know, right? Like, you can't just be walking around smoking or whatever. Yeah. My hotel room had a window and mm-hmm. it opened. But, and right outside the window was the roof. And I was like, oh, I did this before. And I think I think it was in Rome when I was in Europe. I opened the hotel window and I sat right outside on the roof to smoke so I wouldn't make my hotel room stink. So I tried to open the window, but it's got a safety thing, so it won't open all the way. So it was only like a small gap, right? Mm -hmm. And I didn't feel like going for a walk to smoke, and I just wanted to smoke just a little bit. So I lit it right outside the the window with my arms sticking out. And then like to hit it, I didn't want to like bring it in the room. So I'm like putting my face up to the crack and like smoking it through the crack, like all shining style. Like I look like (laughs) here's Johnny fucking the shining smoking a J through the window. (laughs) Yeah. And I'm the whole time I'm thinking, bro, if somebody out there is looking at me right now, this has to be hilarious. Hilarious. One arm sticking out, like trying to make sure the smoke doesn't come in Uh and then Hitting uh, it whenever I can. It like was, a little puppy. Like when a puppy's trying to get his little <laughs> foot through the door. He's sniffing around his little nose in the door. And I kept saying, thinking in my head, this is like a perfect skit for like a TV show. This is something that should have been on high maintenance or something. Yeah. Like the traveling corporate woman trying to get her smoke up. <laughs> I would just smoke in the bathroom. Is that no, like I no? don't want to reek up the... Are you crazy? It reeks up. Yeah, but you run the shower and then you like... I don't know. That's know. too much risk. You get but a floofy. You sp- I was walking later and I had dinner and I had taken the, one of the J's with me. So I was like, since I was going out to eat, I'll smoke on the way back. I'll find a spot. So when I was walking back, I found like the smoke spot, like the neighborhood smoke spot. I oh, saw, that's right. You sent us a picture. I sent a, a little video out. in Discord. And I was like, I saw these three guys just sitting there smoking. And I was like, oh, they're smoking for sure. Okay, I'm just going to go sit not far from them and smoke too. So I found a spot not too far from them sat down they looked over at me like probably like what's this old white lady over here coming to sit next to us <laughs> but then they see me pull out the j and i i light it and he nods at me and i nod nice. back at him and we're all good. <laughs> like, yeah. Word. And then, out of nowhere this young like 20 something year old girl walks up and she has her headphones and she's a little further down and she sits in the steps in the same area she pulls something out and starts to smoke i was like well apparently this is the spot nice <laughs> and then there was another guy further down that had just finished smoking and was eating I was like, this is hilarious. Uh, so, yeah. So, how do you guys do it when you're traveling? <laughs> yeah, if you have something or a strategy, just, perhaps. I take the vape pen, too, but I can't. I know. That's just for, like, throughout the day, you know? Yeah. I need like before little, bed proper, little, little proper smoke out, you know? Right. At least, <laughs> at least at the beginning and the end of the day. Yeah. You need to do your proper little. At the beginning of the day, I was doing the window clothes. thing. I was doing the window. <laughs> Johnny freaking. Yeah, Johnny know. from The Shining uh, through the window. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and football season started. Oh, I know. Yeah, we definitely know I'm football season shirt. started. We had a whole party when we got back. From Orlando because the fantasy all of football them league have draft. a fantasy football league. My husband's in it. A couple of our patrons. Yeah, are this in season it. is the first season we have two additional ladies in the in the league, and they're both patrons. Makes sense. <laughs> awesome. That's another perk. You can- <laughs> yeah. I know. And not only do you go to vacations with us, you could be part of the far fantasy football league. <laughs> Wow. Well, Captain J's fantasy football league. She's not. Yeah, I'm not. I just support it. The name of our football league is Freaks and uh, Freaks and Geeks Fantasy Football League, which I found very interesting that I heard the other day and listening to Great Moments of Weed History that um, they were talking about weed uh, weed and TV, like Great Moments of of Weed on TV, right? Uh So they talk about on Freaks and Geeks, the kids smoke. And right after that episode aired, it aired on because it was a Fox TV show. The show got canceled. And they think it's very much so they having to because do with so many it. people were outraged about showing teenagers using weed on primetime television. Yeah. 
And I was well, like, that's that? why that show got canceled. I was so pissed. It was a great show. Yeah. It's, it's a wonderful show. Yeah. <clears throat> we got a special segment for you guys. New one. We just got an email. 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 I wonder who it's from. It's an email from our friends. <laughs> so, uh, we, but well, my TikTok had a recent, a couple of videos that kind of went off. And I feel like this was kind of one of the things that came in from that, like, you know, exposure. Cause we grew, like, my, our pot smoking mom account grew from like, I'm gonna say from like 13K to like 19.5K. So this email that we received for sure was because someone saw a, the TikTok of me like asking for stoner movie suggestions. So this is how our email reads Hi, PSM. My name is, I'm 33 years old from California. I came across your TikTok and found your page very interesting. I'm a father of an awesome 11 year old. I don't know why I'm writing this email, but maybe I need some type of clarity on an issue I have. So here it goes. I started smoking weed back when I was 12, 13 years old. To be honest, I became interested in marijuana when they had dare classes back in my elementary school. So I smoked weed throughout my teen years and into my adult life. I stopped smoking around the time my son was born, thinking I need to be a provider and become a good parent and a wonderful husband. Me and my wife both struggled with other substances. In parentheses, meth. Yes, damn. That's pretty hardcore. Uh, me, on the other hand, has always uh, was always the type of person who didn't know how to say no to a good time. Besides all that, we cleaned up our act and got our shit together. And we've been clean from dope for about 11 years, our son's age. We promised ourselves that we wouldn't do any sort of drugs that would risk our family. I still like to drink and I still drink occasionally at parties, but nothing beats smoking a perfectly tasting joint. Over the years, I would smoke weed every now and then, and it was like I feel wholesome again. My wife doesn't like weed, but doesn't mind smoking weed either. It's weird, but this is where my dilemma begins. Hmm. A few years ago around COVID, I lost my job and started to look for other ways to make money. Me and my wife have always been go-getters and we know how to hustle and make money legitimately, whether it's buying and selling used stuff from yard sales so we could flip a dollar. So we're good at that. We have a beautiful house and we have a lot of responsibilities that we take care of on a day-to-day -day basis. Nowadays, we've been smoking almost every day, which is fantastic and I love it. We work long hours together and at the end of the day, we get to go home, enjoy our home and roll up and smoke up or vape or whatever the case is. But on occasions, my wife tends to have mental breakdowns and tells me I'm a piece of shit. I'm irresponsible. I'm mentally immature. What type of example are you going to set for your son if you're a pothead? And in my defense, I say, well, hard work always pays off. And it's up to the individual if they want to do good. Nothing is wrong with smoking weed. And I tell her, look, if our son wants to smoke weed, he can when he's a legal age, just like drinking. We live in a time that weed is now legal in our state. He's from California. Mm -hmm. And it's on its way to be federally legal. She has this stigma towards marijuana. I don't know if it was the way she was brought up, but I think it's my parent. But I think it is my parents were more on the hipper side of things than her Hippier. parents. Hippier. <laughs> than her parents. They went to church and were more conservative. But my thing is, is, why do I feel like I'm doing something wrong when in actuality I'm not? I feel like I'm responsible. I take care of my bills, my mm -hmm. stuff as a dad. And people can actually rely on me when they need something from me. But my wife, but yeah, my wife says I'm just a horrible person and it hurts my feelings because I love to smoke weed every day. Not all day because I like to enjoy my high, but I like to smoke in the evening and just chill. She's gotten to the point where she makes me choose an ultimatum. Like it's your family or the weed. I never say anything because that's not a fair choice in my opinion. I don't know. What racks my brain is that when her sister and her cousins come over, also big potheads, 
everything is so awesome and great. But when it's just me and her and I run out and I want to go buy more, it's it's ultimatums or she's even thrown divorce and she's literally kicked me out of the house because of it. I love my wife and I love my weed, but I don't know if I'm wrong or what. I really hope I can get some clarity or just looking for someone to shine light on situation. I really like what you guys are doing. Keep up the good work. Keep it lit. Confused dad. I'm confused because didn't he say that they work together and they would smoke when they after a long day together and right. But sometimes she has this mental breakdown where she has this issue with it and is like now doing ultimatums. I feel this is a lot of projecting. I feel right. this is like she feels guilty for doing it mm -hmm. and in him wanting to do it, you know, it's making her feel guilty for also wanting to do it. You know what I mean? That's what yeah. it feels like to me because of her uh upbringing her. of uh -huh. having conservative family okay, saying I that, see. you know what i mean yeah like her guiltiness it's her own guilt but i feel like there's more than just that i feel like there's gotta be something more to that like right because sometimes i feel like a weed is just kind of like a cover-up it's just an excuse it's, for why she's really and that's what i think it's her being mad at herself that's but what it is. Then what but when why so what? So when he runs he, out, just when he runs out and needs to buy and wants to buy more, it's that's like, like a oh, chance wow. to be like uh, like stop. So yeah, and make it seem like she doesn't want it to, but if she's also partaking, yeah, you know, I, that's what it feels like. If she's partaking most of the time as well with him each evening, right? When he runs out and she's like, Oh, let's just stop, we don't need it. I feel like it's a projection thing. Yeah, that's a good uh, that's a good take on it. Yeah, I feel like I think it could be something more. There could be like what what makes her flip out? Like, does he smoke and just don't? The I mean, he says he's responsible and he takes care of his shit. He, he usually does it in the evening, but so I'm assuming that's probably after like when the kids are down. Yeah, the kids are down or already in their room. His his eleven year old is older. Yeah, you know. I don't yeah, know. I don't know. I, we listen. We have a feature on our anchor that you can record a voice message if you relate to our confused dad or if you think uh, there's something that you can offer to him for clarity. Well, I'm, I honestly advice. think there's something more to it. I do. I do believe what you said, Jay, that like the possibility yeah. that that she does have that conservative side of her that kind of starts to take over when it's like, oh, we don't want to have to like fiend for more. We don't want to have to buy more. Yeah, because obviously it's like, oh, damn, I'm out or I'm almost out. And it's when he's like, it's like so in her head, it's probably like, why do we need it? You know, so like we don't really need it until she picks that fight. And it's really because she's in my opinion, it feels like just by the little inf information we got from that right. email that it's, it's a lot of projection because she feels guilty about yeah. doing it. Yeah. So if you were at home, uh, go over to our anchor, do a voice note. We could play it back on our show. We would love to do that. We did that a little bit at the beginning of yeah, the show. We had somebody share when we first started, yeah. but, um, but yeah, let's, let's, yeah, if you have advice for him or if you have a similar situation that you were in or if you don't want to do a voice message and you want to send an email, that works, too. Yeah, I had suggested um the episode where we talked to uh, Lauren, Lauren mm -hmm. about her husband kind of using that against her, uh, you know, and how there was so many more things to it that that was just kind of like. A way for him to, you know pull control, something to control, control her yeah, yeah it's a you know mm -hmm. so 100 <clears throat> all right we got another we got an old segment now you guys are used to this one everyone loves it news nugs where we get high and read, read the news, news to you. you. We're going to do it a little different today. We're actually going to just read some headlines. We're not going to read some full stories for news nugs because there were a bunch of interesting new uh, headlines that I thought we should share. And the first one here is 
governor signs cannabis and child welfare bill. So California governor Gavin Newsom signed a bill to mandate that in child welfare, welfare cases, parental marijuana use will be treated in the same manner as parents or guardians who use or possess alcohol and legally prescribed medication. That's All right. Awesome. That's fantastic. That's good news. All right. San More Fran good news. San Francisco lawmakers unanimously approved psychedelics decriminalization resolution. San Francisco, California Board of Supervisor, Supervisors unanimously approved the psychedelics decriminalization resolution calling on police to make entheogens, entheogens amongst the lowest priority and saying city resources should not be used for enforcement. That's cool. So I'm sure there's going to be an uptick in psychedelics available in san francisco what's in that picture uh that looks like shrooms peyote, like peyote but i don't know what that other one is i don't know what that other one is like i don't know oh it looks like a regular plant that you could see anywhere mm. uh so this is pretty crazy the um <clears throat> uk government blocks bermuda from legalizing marijuana on same day new prime minister takes office so the UK appointed governor of Bermuda announced the country would be blocked from enacting a bill to legalize marijuana on the same day that the UK prime minister Liz Truce took office. The territory's our attorney general said they'll go ahead with the cannabis reform anyway, setting up a constitutional crisis. So, yeah, there's a couple tweets here uh, that we're sharing on the screen. And uh, from Clear Cannabis Law Reform, a terrible start to Truce Liz's government as Britain, as uh, Prime Minister, a backwards colonial power, stamps on Bermuda's dem democratic decision on intelligent evidence-based drug policy. UK has said, no, we don't care what your parliament decided. You may not legalize. So what does the UK govern? Yeah, it's like one of their providences. Like oh. it's part of, and Bermuda had passed to legalize marijuana and the UK um, was supposed to make a decision on it and they're waiting until the new person came into the power and now on her first day in office they're saying no. So this guy here, <clears throat> Lloyd Russell Moyle, an MP which means, uh, what does MP stand for again? Those are the other people. Uh, I thought MP started. Parliament. It's part of the parliament. Oh, I thought it would stand for market price. No, no, no. Yeah, that's, that's on menus. <laughs> I know. That's on menus. So and peace the in the girl. British <laughs> politics. It's the it's the people that work in the different um uh not prime minister parties that they have. I don't know. It's not a prime minister, but it's a part of part of parliament. parliament. Yeah, I don't remember what it stands for. Uh, the British government today has intervened to stop Bermuda legalizing cannabis, but refused to intervene when they banned gay marriage, saying it would be wrong to intervene. This is just wrong and will hasten calls for their independence. Damn. That's fucked up. Oh, boy. This is silly. This one is silly. So this is silly. We're <laughs> so I honestly didn't understand this because it's fake, but it's real. But it's fake, but real. It's but it's real. real fake, it was made by it's... the government. Right. But it's a fake moon press conference that they like hired actors to perform. Yeah. A Department of Defense PSA styled as a fake press conference warns service members that CBD is off limits, even in ganja guac burritos and dandruff shampoo for cats with that amazing CBD enhancer. <laughs> Somebody should have talked about that CBD candle I found at fucking Marshall's. How who knows how that works? You breathe it in. Who knows? Oh my God. You want to watch the conference? It's this one. Here we go. Hey. National Guard. Station, it says it was American Forces Network when I. Thank you for coming AFM. today. We just want to reiterate that the DOD's policy on CBD is that it cannot be used by service members for any reason due to its unregulated nature and the possibility of THC. If a service member has a positive drug now test, 420, CBD is not a valid excuse. 
I can now take a few questions. Oh, okay. 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 I can't what about CBD oil? Don't smoke, smoke weed. Weed. Again, service members cannot take any so kind of CBD. Food, oils, lotions, etc. What about CBD lotion? He just that said would lotion. fall under the classification of any kind of CBD. So that would be a no? <laughs> That's a definite no. Dr. Light, I have a question yes. over here. What if it's in a ganja guac burrito with CBD aioli at Nacho Camacho's? The sauce has CBD in it? Yes. Then no, the service member cannot eat that. What about dandruff shampoo for cats with that amazing CBD enhancer? <laughs> service members cannot use any type of CBD. If you fail your I would test, suggest the cat learn to clean you're itself, which I was under the impression that's pretty it's much all they do in the first place. Wow. Read my lips. No CBD. No exceptions. Those are the rules. It's not <laughs> worth losing your career. 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 That was silly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I first I was like, wait a second, what is happening? <laughs> uh, that is the silliest. Like, like that's a funny way to approach the PSA of don't use CBD. So they can't use CBD at all. Yeah, sounds like I'm. Well, I'm 40. I'm never going into the military, but like, that sucks for them. Can't even use CBD just because of the chance of it. Having some THC and yeah, and then that being the thing that fucks you up. All right, so this is a funny uh, story. Oh wait, I wanted to share. There you go. There you go. A little video that not a story. It's a video. Your time with Sona. Did she ever encourage you to break the law in any way? Because she's a little bit of a rule breaker. Well, I think it was legal then. What? What are we talking about? Well. The Ste first, stealing? <laughs> it wasn't stealing. We no. never stole anything together, I don't mm -hmm. think. Okay, I don't think. But one of the first times I ever tried weed was in your office. Oh, shit. Like, what? literally in his office. In my office what? at Warner Brothers? With Sona. We, this is a safe space, right? Like, we can't yeah, have trouble. Oh, yeah, there's weed. no, re there's oh, no sure. recording right. device here. Okay, cool. In the podcast studio? Yeah, but like what's said on the podcast, like you can't get fired for, right? Uh, well, let's hear it and I'll let you know. Yeah. Okay. So wait, you're, <laughs> you're in uh, my office at Warner Brothers Studio. It was a day where you did a double show. So you always give like, you know, like there's always a dinner break. Mm -hmm. And you were downstairs getting ready for the next show. And we went into your office and opened up the window. We did blow the smoke out the window. <laughs> This is where they shot Goonies, so, by the way. You know, so like, this, is, this is a sacred place. They shot Casablanca, and more important to you and Sona, Goonies. On your stage, they shot they both shot, of those? They shot, uh, Casablanca was not shot on my stage. It was shot in and around, I think, in a couple of locations. Mm -hmm. But uh, Goonies, too? Goonies. You reefed up on the set of Goonies? Yeah. David Hopping, well, I'm proud of you. I you wish know. I would have done that. I don't see where that was going by. Did you get a good buzz going? Not really. I don't think I did it right. The first time, you don't always feel it. Yeah. yeah. I've tried it but, many times, and, and still? nothing really happens. I love that. Yeah. Bob you probably have such a firewall for any kind of brain changing thing. You know what I mean? It couldn't get through. I might that. be. I might yeah. be uh, just a strong barrier. Um, whenever they give me a medication, I need a lot of it really? for it to have an effect. And I've heard that that's a red-haired thing. Really? That redheads need more of a medication. Yeah, I have that's actually... He's joking. He's so that? shocked. I think you need something. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 my, oh, my stars. Oh, oh. Not about the red uh, oh. So, anyway, that's a little digression. Mm -hmm. So, wow, so that's... That's ballsy of Sona to get you. And then my first you. bag of edibles was from Sona, which kind of came from you because you rewarded her when she watched, like, whatever, 50 episodes of Friends. Yeah, she, we did a up. thing if we could, because she watched so much TV work, I made a bet that she couldn't watch 50 episodes of Friends, and she did, mm -hmm. and I rewarded her with her favorite thing, uh, a bag of uh, <laughs> edible <laughs> gummies. And she kind of just, like, went through the hall as, like, the weed fairy, just, like, giving people wow. edibles. She's getting you guys hooked, yeah. and then she can mm -hmm. be a dealer. Yeah. This one's free. <laughs> oh, mm -hmm. my God. Wow. What uh, I wonder if this is in her book. I don't remember this I part. Her book. I don't that part. I don't think this part's book. in there. Oh, other no. crimes are assistant. in her book. Yes, yeah. that's true. Assistant. Now mm -hmm. you're the assistant, not just for me, uh -huh. but for Jeff Ross as well, because yeah. we've really pared things down a bit here. <laughs> so you're you're assistant to two of us. Mm -hmm. Sona, you're supposed to be assisting Sona, mm -hmm. but she's uh, she's off selling a book on a book tour, yeah. and the book's about. 
how she screws around all the time uh-huh. and you do all the work. <laughs> mm-hmm. So is that fair? Like, uh-huh. any resentment there? Mm-hmm. No, because someday you get to write a book. Yeah. The world's most ah! average assistant. <laughs> How funny. All right. Well, listen, thank you. And please keep ratting her out. Okay. This is important. How funny. Right. I would. Oh, my God. I would have so died. That guy's he first time a... smoking weed was in Conan O'Brien's office. Oh, but look at him. It was also on the set, the same set the Goonies was. That uh, guy looks like he cannot hurt a fly. <laughs> he looks like such a nicest guy. And on top of that, I do have a theory of Conan and why. He just can't get high. What is it? I feel like, okay. He's not f- doing it right. Well, mm, I feel like, do you see how he is like tough to give medication? Like, first of all, he's a really he big guy. Yeah. Okay. Second of all, he's Irish. I'm sure he could drink a lot. I feel like Irish people have a very high tolerance, not just alcohol, but just like in general. So I feel like all of those factors lead up to... And then when he's he's probably taken a couple hits and been like hasn't taken it seriously hasn't really but, yeah I you don't know? think he's really tried it right like he hasn't been in the right place he probably always tries it just to like show people like oh because remember that one Seth Rogen With Seth Rogen and him yeah yeah and he gave him a joint right on TV live TV and he smoked it but. It wasn't like he still had a show. I feel like when your adrenaline is going and a lot of times you and me are out in, in festivals mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and you're just like, man, I'm stoned. And I'm just like there smoking, going, I'm, it doesn't matter how many blunts I smoke or how many joints I smoke right now. I'm not going to be really stoned just because the adrenaline's just like going, going. So I don't know. Those are a couple theories when uh about him not getting stoned i don't think he's actually sat there too to like sit and enjoy it too i think it's just always been yeah you know whatever on the cuffs or something else <laughs> i gotta love conan though i love him love conan o'brien one of my favorites the best I would love to get high with Conan O'Brien. Oh apparently God. he can't get high yeah i'd like to uh get high, I, test high that. around him i'd like to test that I'm sure if Snoop Dogg got in a room with him and tried to get him high, he do. He'd oh my succeed. God! Have you seen Snoop Dogg has a new children's show? No. Called Doggy Land. Oh my God! No, I have not. Seen I this. swear to you, I I try to reach out to them. We should try to get them on our show. <laughs> Just if he's trying to promote <laughs> his kids' show, wouldn't he want to promote it to a bunch of pot smoking moms? <laughs> I'm gonna try so, so hard, next, you guys. Next season, listen, manifest that shit. We're getting guys, Snoop Dogg. We are, listen. I, I I am on a mission. I have a goal to just try to like get bigger, better interviews, like in the weed <laughs> world. That so amazing. I mean, I tried to. I reached out to Houseplant. I tried to get. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, but I feel like Doggy Land. This whole this children's Doggy. show. Good. We might might be it might be a, a crack good angle. in the door. A good angle. Might be exactly. In the meantime, we got a little bit of local news. A little love. I love you, Miami. <laughs> I I feel like I feel like that should change to. I'm conflicted, Miami. I'm conflicted. <laughs> <laughs> so true with all these For fucking real. stories, especially in our cannabis community. These stories, we're dealing with these caps. Pressures builds on Florida Governor Ron DeSantis's toss out of dosage limits. So Florida Commissioner Nikki Freed is calling on Governor DeSantis and the Health Department to roll back dosage restrictions and a recent emergency rule. Patients and advocates in Florida are fed up with restrictions to access for medical cannabis. Florida health officials enacted new emergency rules on August 29th, imposing explicit limits on the amount of medical cannabis the patients may legally obtain and consume, which we previously reported on. Advocates like normal are concerned, saying that the emergency rules were established behind closed doors, absent of any public input. Further, the rules arrived almost six years after voters initially approved Florida's constitutional amendment establishing a medical cannabis system. Mm -hmm. On (laughs) September 8th, 
Florida Commissioner of Agriculture and Consumer Services, Nikki Freed, blasted the Florida Department of Health and its Office of Medical Marijuana Use, calling them to roll back extreme, extreme, extreme dosage restrictions enacted through an emergency rule, a process that afforded less than three days advance notice to doctors and patients and provided no public comment opportunity. Florida Department of Health's OMMU website, Emergency Rule 64ER22-8, stipulates that a qualified physician may not issue a certification for more than three 70-day supply limits of cannabis or more than six 35-day supply limits of cannabis in smoking form. Hmm. Also, a 35-day supply limit for cannabis in smoking form shall not exceed 2.5 ounces. Many more restrictions were added to the list. We have a post up on our Instagram uh, outlining all of those changes. It's every route has a specific cap. Oh, so frustrating. And that's what they're saying. And they want to have it repealed. So the rules do allow physicians, however, to request exceptions. We covered all this before. Commissioner Freed announced this letter at a press conference held on September 8th at the Florida Capitol where she was joined by medical cannabis patients and advocates. And we saw Jody in the background of the press conference mm -hmm. uh, who has been on our show, including Dr. Barry Gordon with the compassionate cannabis clinic and Jody James. There they go. They just mentioned her with the Florida cannabis action network, Florida can to discuss why the emergency rules must be tossed out and how it can do harm to medical cannabis patients, such as ones who require higher do doses of THC. This rule change is unnecessary. It's implementation poorly noticed and its impacts extremely harmful with hundreds of thousands of patients in Florida no longer able to access their medicine in the quantities they need for efficient treatment as determined by their doctors. This reflects a lack of understanding of medical cannabis by the DOH and the OMMU at best and it is an act of cruelty at worst, said Commissioner Freed. We are sending a strong message to DeSantis administration to put patients first, protect their access to legal and life-saving medicine, and roll back these restrictions. I will never stop fighting for a medical cannabis patients and full legalization. Fair is fair. No, Normal's deputy director, Paul Armentano, described the newly imposed limits as a solution in search of a problem. He said... These arbitrary and unnecessary limits were established without input from either the patient community or from those physicians who specialize in providing oversight to the medical cannabis patients. They will likely result in creating unnecessary confusion and they will place an undue burden upon patients and their doctors. Decisions regarding cannabis care ought to be between patients and their physicians, should not be made by bureaucrats. For real. Breed is an independently elected member of the Florida cabinet. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis told a group of reporters on August 23rd that the medical cannabis license holders in the state need to pay more for their license application and renewal fees. State officials should charge these people more, DeSantis said. Yeah, we were going to play a clip, but it's pretty much reinforcing. Uh, the re same thing it's we basically saying. saying what we read. But um, if you want to see the press conference, you can go to this article that we're sharing and they have a clip to the press conference. Um, we are showing here um, a tweet that Nikki Fried shared. She says, I'm calling on the Florida Department of Health to reverse course on the harmful medical cannabis dosage restrictions they put in place under emergency rule, cutting patients access to legal and life-saving medicine by two thirds with less than three days notice. It is unacceptable and cruel. This was a tweet. Looks like it has uh, not enough interaction on it. <laughs> yeah, go over to it and interact with it. Yeah, and like sign the petition that Florida Can has. Uh, I've already signed it if you're a Florida patient. Um, and then they do like a little patient survey at the end as well. But times are crazy. Poguto, here. man. Poguto. Yeah. They're just doing things for no reason. Mm -hmm. And it mm -hmm. sucks because people who are already on the fence of becoming patients. They see this and they're like, oh, why am I going to? Yeah, gonna... they're like, fuck that shit. Why We're trying am to I get gonna... people to become patients so we can do events and stuff with them and uh -huh. go to these places and they're going to be like, oh, we're limiting. Right. Things. So what's the point? 
even though I, even though what's the point? I, I will say this. It's getting cheap as fuck to buy from dispensaries <laughs> out here. It's and it's getting it's going to get cheaper. Yeah. At, over the last the past weekend, we went out and the dispensaries were like, it's going to get cheaper and the bud's going to be good. It's not going to be like, you know, shake or whatever. The what are the grounds they call it? Mm-hmm. It's like it's like good quality bud. And. I mean, I saw my friends pl- like cold plug. Flour, not like mids. Yeah, I saw my friends plug. And I, I saw his prices and I was like, mm, I get better deal at the dispensary. Yeah. I mean, and you know, it's not just because I'm a pot smoking mom, <laughs> but I could get better deals at a dispensary, even if I wasn't. So, like, sorry, especially if you have your card already. But I don't, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't blame them. I don't blame people for doing what they do. Yeah. Well, that's the end of the show. Hey, you guys, thank you so much for listening, for participating, being part of our community. Especially to our patrons, our in the rotation and OG patrons that we give a special side shout out to. These are our top tier or OGs, meaning they've been here since the start. Yeah, we thank you guys so much, Yanni, Destiny, Lauren, Jesse, Christy, Denise, Peaches, Natalie, Angelina, Jenny, Catherine, Jay, Chrissy, Guillermo, Diane, and Gabby. Hey, you too can become a patron for early access to episodes, additional content, video, and full uncut versions of our interviews. We got Zoom smoke sessions, (laughs) exclusive mom trips, and so much more. Come over and become a patron. Yeah. And uh, please make sure you check out our website. Check out our partners. Subscribe, rate, review, and share our content. And this is our season finale episode. So we will see you again in a few weeks. Love you guys. Bye. Bye.